Uh, today we'll upload the assignments. Okay, I'll make a separate folder in class assignments, and then uh, uh, there you can find it. I will not put it in assignments. Otherwise, uh, you know there is. I don't think that submission is mandatory. So I'll uh, upload in the assignment uh, uh, folder on Teams itself. So we started with this uh, phase diagram of a pure substance. And uh, you understand now that what is uh, pure substance? It's a single chemical species uh, whose, uh, whose, I mean, whose chemical structure is uniform throughout. And phase means uh, it's a specified mass of substance having uniform composition. It may be multi-component system like ethanol and water example. Okay. But uh, its physical state is uniform and its composition is uniform throughout the that phase. So this is a pressure volume diagram, okay, for any real fluid. So you, you have seen that uh, uh, before this, sorry, before this uh, critical point, which is this one, sorry. So the, the, above this, at higher temperatures, there is no liquefaction. Or what you call there is no liquid phase. Okay. So these are red curves. We said these are isotherms. Okay. And then when you uh, go below uh, uh, this critical temperature, then when you, so this is V. Okay. So when you decrease the volume, okay, or in other words, if when you increase the pressure, remember these are equilibrium process. So whatever is the gas pressure inside, the same pressure is outside so how you will do that process that's a different thing okay that we can discuss later but that's how you are doing it uh, of course reversibly means quasi -stat statically and uh, when you are compressing the gas the volume will decrease it gas will get compressed so it will follow this line let's say at a given temperature t and when there is enough compression these molecules come closer to each other and then there is a phase change. And when there is a phase change, so first liquid will come to this point. This point is called, let's see if I say point A, then point A corresponds to saturated vapor. Okay. And then if you further uh, <clears throat> Compre I mean, uh, and then there is a phase change, of course. And then if you further try to compress it, okay. So of course, uh, the state variables doesn't change, pressure and temperature, it's a phase change. So eventually everything will become liquid. In between, we have a mixture. So if I, I as I told you, we will see through examples also, any point in between is a mixture of uh, this liquid, uh, saturated liquid, and saturated vapor. Okay, so if I say C, C contains saturated vapor plus saturated liquid, any point C. And then if I say this point is B, then B is saturated liquid. Okay, and then further you can compress it. Okay. And of course, it's very obvious that as you go up, temperature is increasing, so that beyond a certain temperature, uh, kinetic energy of molecules are so high, so that you cannot uh, make it a vapor, a uh, liquid. Okay. So this is one one ex. Remember that this is uh, one experiment huh? or one such curve. When you generate such many curves at different temperature like this, and maybe few more like this of course they don't cross each other and then when you make an envelope of these you know phase change points then you create a phase boundary so this is the envelope this is envelope of that so this is uh, one phase line and this is another phase line okay fine in between we have liquid vapor both 
this is liquid resin and this is vapor resin fine okay acha this 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 line is saturated this thing okay or saturated vapor what we will call uh, this regime anyone can guess have you ever heard this regime this regime oh, let me change uh, what we should call this regime this whole regime it's called superheated steam so once you cross this saturated vapor point and if you further uh, 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 increase the uh, let's say temperature or increase the volume so superheated is okay. i hope i am correct and there is no mistake but we'll see when we'll see the actual steam tables if there is any mistake we can correct it but i think that's what it is okay so this is pressure volume diagram of a pure substance then sorry i think we have to click on so this is the same thing okay now what you see here this thing this this thing which you see this will become clear when we will read this uh, equation of state this uh, what we call it van der waal equation this is the solution of van der waal equation and in reality we know that it doesn't exist this is not reality in reality this red curve is there experimentally we cannot observe it because this is unstable solution there is a complete mathematical de description which is not the part of this course but i am just telling you that if you solve the van der waal equation of state it gives you such kind so this is fine this matches with van der waal equation this is also fine means uh, experimental and van der waal equation solution matches but in between van der waal predicts something else like this which is not true what we experimentally realize is this fake change okay so this is the same thing okay this is temperature volume diagram okay <clears throat> so in temperature volume diagram now you can try that now we will do we will draw isobars okay the way we draw isotherms now we will draw isobars so it means we will keep the pressure constant and we will do the process quasi statically we have seen such example yesterday where the gas was expanding against atmosphere and atmosphere was at constant pressure so that is called isobaric process okay so you take any uh, pressure you fix it i mean throughout the process you maintain that pressure and then you can uh, increase the temperature okay so one can start either from uh, here or one can start from here also that's fine okay great so how this diagram looks like so what is happening that you are keeping the pressure constant and you are adding heat to the system okay so when you add heat to the system it will expand as well as its internal energy will also increase fine so let's say if we start uh, somewhere from here let's say this point then as you in supply more and more heat at constant pressure so we are adding heat adding heat at constant pressure okay so gas will expand because the heat which you are supplying some part of that energy will do some work as well as internal energy of the gas will also increase so temperature is increasing but still it is liquid then at a certain point what happens that since the internal energy of the molecules average kinetic energy of the molecules is increasing after a certain point they become more free means their intermolecular uh, forces becomes weaker the attractive forces and then vaporization starts taking place 
So this is the point of phase change. So in between, of course, we have both liquid and vapor. So this is saturated liquid point. Okay. And then here we have saturated vapor. And then if you further provide the heat at constant pressure, then again it, be it becomes uh, a complete vapor and uh, then it may follow any any equation of state. Not ideal, of course, but any other maybe Van der Waal equation or any other equation. There are many equation of states. Okay, so that's how a typical TV diagram looks like at constant pressure. Okay. So you can create such many isobars, right? Like, let's say one more. And so on. And then, of course, this is the critical line. OK, so there is PC and there is TC. These, these, these all are fixed. OK, you cannot change it. So beyond this, everything is vapor that you know. OK, so this is again saturated vapor line. And this blue line. Is saturated liquid line. Anything in between this, this, this is a mixture of both liquid and vapor phase. Saturated liquid, saturated vapor. Okay. So remember this terminology. This is saturated vapor. This is mixture of both saturated vapor and saturated liquid. This is saturated liquid. This line is saturated liquid line. And this line is saturated vapor line. Okay. Great. So this is temperature volume diagram. This is a general diagram for any pure substance. Multi component system has another complexity. Okay. Of course, we uh, draw such diagram for those systems also, but that we will learn in the second module of this subject. Okay. Let me open the new page. This is done. Yeah. Same thing, okay, just uh, a more, uh, you know, informative diagram. So this is, as I told you, this is superheated vapor regime, so there is no mistake. So you have to be very careful while running this whiteboard and uh, yes. So this is superheated vapor regime, okay, as I told you. This is saturated liquid vapor regime, means mixture of both. And uh, this one is called compressed liquid regime. And this is our critical point. That is the rough idea of this phase diagram. So if I ask someone, Someone means, let's see if I ask Jagdish, Jagdish, you are there. Jagdish. So, uh, Anik. Yes, sir. Yeah, Anik, sir. Do, do, uh, do you know how we create this diagram? This, this. So, let me, I am uh, drawing it. And just to confirm that you all got it, can you tell me how we are creating this? This purple line. Yes, describe briefly. Uh, sir, uh, is this developed direct or indirect? Uh, sir, uh, we are starting either from the left end or the right end. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, slowly we are adding heat uh, if we are starting from the left end. And so it is an isobaric process. And uh, uh, when the uh, pressure is same and uh, temperature increases, and no, no, I got point... a point. Let, let me uh, again ask my question very clearly. You, uh, maybe you are answering same thing, but in a different way. I am saying this uh, uh, purple color curve, which I, ha I have drawn just few minutes ago. How we yes. create this this envelope? Very simple, uh, sir. Uh, uh, sir, in each isobaric line, at yeah. the uh, there is a point uh, where. Uh, 
uh, it's uh, it uh, gets converted from it changes so phase its phase change, from phase, uh, phase change. it changes. Yes. There is a phase, phase change, change. Yes. and so we get a horizontal line. So the you got point from which the point from which yes, sir. Uh, the yeah. point from which the horizontal line starts true. and ends. Yes. The locus of such points is the very uh, good. locus of the, such. yes. So remember, this is an envelope. This is a locus of such phase change point. Okay, from saturated liquid side and from saturated vapor side. Good. That's what I wanted to ensure that you guys got it. That never think that we have created this purple corrupt directly. You have done these isobaric ex uh, processes, isobaric experiments on a pure substance, and then by uh, uh, then you got these points, these phase change points, and then when you uh, uh, pass the envelope through all these points, you get this envelope. Good. Very okay. So then again we move. Okay, this is not needed. Why? Because I told you that most of the time we will deal with only with this much. So I'm skipping this part. Okay, if someone is interested, I mean, you can, uh, with similar logic, you can create such envelopes. Okay, that is liquid solid uh, transition. I mean, it's fake change. Okay. Okay, this is PT diagram. Okay, this is not so useful, but I thought since we are doing various phase diagrams, we can discuss it. So I'll just describe what are these things. <clears throat> so this 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 broken green line is for water, which is very unique with water. Otherwise, this solid line is more general. Uh, this solid green line for uh, any pure substance but water has some anomalous behavior okay it has a very deep science which is not uh, this is beyond the scope of this course okay this point red point is critical point okay critical point means below this you cannot liquefy the gas okay of course supercritical fluid is not the part of this course but remember, just as a curiosity or information, so let's say if you want to go from vapor to liquid, this is the boundary. Okay. So one can go this way also. Huh? But is it always necessary that we should cross this phase line? Answer is not. There is another way that you can go from vapor to compressed liquid through this, this path, through supercritical fluid. If time permits, maybe at the end of this course, if time permits, because there are so many things to cover, I'll try to touch this aspect, okay? Otherwise not. So this is the critical point, okay? Uh, everything is written, you can read this diagram later on. This is a uh, vapor or gaseous phase. This is liquid phase, this is solid phase. I'm sure uh, while preparing uh, for J, you have confronted this diagram because you are aware of the triple point okay so there is something called gas liquid line liquid solid line and there is gas solid line also right this one this red line this is sublimation curve okay but these kind of diagrams are more complex and not very useful for engineering purposes okay this is more from uh, uh, informative from physics point of view but for engineers this is not so informative okay so let's move ahead this is not difficult you can um, if you think over it you can create this diagram okay but not useful so let's move So this is the ah, temperature entropy. So you all know that uh, from uh, the explanation which you know that the definition of entropy, you understand it that uh, the degree of randomness. From that point of, uh, although remember the entropy, I'm just introducing this term, okay? 
this will come uh, in a proper way when we will start second law but since we will be needing in the first law also in order to difficult uh, bit in order to solve a difficult problem and more realistic problem so i am introducing entropy also the uh, notion of entropy which you have you know it as a degree of randomness remember that definition comes from microscopic picture okay what we are doing is macroscopic we have discussed this aspect in detail that so there is something called microscopic or molecular de description micro scopic or molecular description like kinetic theory of gases from there what you know as degree of randomness randomness you know it as entropy okay although it's a very vague definition but that's fine now if you see from macroscopic approach or what we know as classical thermodynamics which we are studying it is called classical thermodynamics and this one is called statistical because it is it is based on statistics so statistical okay anyway what we are doing is classical thermodynamics in this entropy is defined this way ds is very small amount of heat by t and is small and in a reversible way so you have to supply heat that we will see how so how we supply heat in reversible way that we will see supply heat reversibly so your process should be reversible so all these aspects will be discussed in second law again what does it mean by reversible uh, heat supply okay so in classical thermodynamics that's how we define entropy okay it doesn't uh, talk about degree of randomness that is microscopic picture so i thought before uh, since we are going to use the entropy before knowing it properly a rough description is uh, important and that's why i discussed it so that is one uh, picture is uh, this uh, molecular picture or microscopic picture and another one is this this classical thermodynamics ds is defined as heat given to the system by temperature at that given point okay reversible for if process is reversible this is not true and that is the uh, second law that we will see okay so as you can see that uh, in this diagram we have isobars so these are constant pressure line so if you are adding heat to the system what will happen that of course its temperature will increase no doubt because this uh, some part of heat will contribute to the uh, average molecular energy or average kinetic energy of the molecules and since t is always positive and if you are adding heat its entropy will also increase from degree of randomness point of view you also understand that larger we provide larger is the temperature more is the uh, higher is the kinetic energy so more is the chance of a uh, more system uh, contains more degree of randomness okay a rough explanation so as you can see that uh, as if you choose any curve huh, any curve as temperature uh, temperature increases entropy also increases okay these are isobars so again uh, you can create such diagrams huh, this ts diagram and again you will get the same thing that this is saturated vapor line and this is saturated liquid line what is interesting to see here this the way you plotted pv and tv where v was the extensive variable okay and p was p and t are intensive variable okay so on the x y axis we are always keeping a intensive variable like pressure or temperature on the x axis we are putting extensive variable like volume here we have entropy okay so that is a general convention which is followed in this phase diagrams that on a y axis you have intensive variable
and on x axis we have an extensive variable okay so what is important to note down here that when the phase change starts taking place then neither pressure of course uh, it's a isobar so pressure is constant temperature will not also change that you know that when there is a phase change this pressure and temperature doesn't change what changes the way volume is changing entropy is changing and of course when you are going to more liquid side your degree of randomness will decrease and that's why your entropy is decreasing so during phase change remember during phase change entropy changes although temperature and pressure doesn't change entropy changes so if you are going from vapor to liquid your entropy will decrease okay so many times people miss it during phase change entropy changes okay perfect so this is a temperature entropy diagram and as we will cover more and more second law you will learn to know how we can create in fact you by your own you would be able to create such diagrams we will give a thought okay. and we can revisit these plots again but keep a, i mean just giving a rough idea because we will use such diagrams okay so what is the x axis i can't see because this uh, uh, you know this screen sharing uh, prompt is coming what is the anyone what is the x axis here is it ts tv what it is can you see that avilas no sir we can't see oh, you, you could just hide it. it you could hide oh. it oh i can hide it ha 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 right yes sir yeah thank you Ah, uh, this is entropy again. Okay, yes, thank you. So this is entropy again. Okay. So this is also S. So same thing, ah. Huh? I have just put multiple uh, uh, diagrams from various sources so that you can get familiar. Ah, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, so these uh, red lines are isobars. Okay. So same thing which I discussed, the temperature temperature entropy diagram. This is our uh, saturated vapor line. and uh, this is our saturated liquid line then this is uh, saturated vapor regime superheated vapor regime sorry superheated vapor regime once you cross the saturated line superheated means you are give, uh, giving uh, means more and more heat to the uh, vapor okay once there is a phase change you are providing very large amount of heat and this is compressed liquid or to called as super cool liquid okay and this is of course our mixture regime this fine so that's why i put multiple uh, uh, diagram nothing else huh? great acha in this ts diagram if we take area under curve what will get anyone i have given you the definition of entropy can you guess heat heat simple okay because dq is tds right. let's move yeah. then this is where, yes please go no, no, no. can you please explain the dotted line in the previous one oh this one this one uh, i don't know what they are following i, I haven't seen it bhavna uh, i'm not sure what they are trying to convey here very sorry and yeah, this looks like one by density yeah that's fine but then uh, uh, volume they are saying is it a constant volume i think of course it's not yeah so basically uh, someone has tried to, uh, to draw a constant volume line isn't it i is, who was saying it i think so i have to check so i don't i would not like to comment on this uh, but I, when i took to, from the sources i only uh, kept in mind that uh, there are isobars there so bhavna i have to see huh? because this is just a image from google and then i have to go to the source uh, my guess is that uh, it should be a constant volume line constant specific volume right who, who was answer, uh, who said uh, it's uh, is uh, someone said na i i also think so 
I have to check constant volume line. Means along this broken line, specific volume, specific volume is nothing but total volume by mass of the system. Right, Bhavna? That's what right I think. Specific volume, I guess, because one the inverse of density is yeah, so I'm saying that specific volume, not volume, specific volume. Oh, okay, you are saying that don't say it, you are right. Constant volume line will be wrong. Specific volume. Yeah, because we are talking in terms of meter cube per kg. Yes, I think you are right. That's what it should be. I think so. Right, Bhavna? Okay, sir. Yeah, I mean, uh, I will check, but I'm sure that's what it should be. And of course, uh, creating such uh, uh, more lines like constant volume line, and, and anything else, if you want, we'll see in the Molyer diagram, there is something else. You have to do some calculations and you can always create such diagrams. If you have all the data set, rather than uh, thinking anything in terms of uh, scientific explanation that if this decrease increases, what happens to another parameter? You don't need to do that. You can simply calculate these parameters and you can mark these points. And the way you draw graph, you know, when you started drawing the graph, maybe in your 10th standard, where you have x and y, you can simply draw these plots. Why I'm saying not uh, thinking, don't think uh, too much on, uh, you know, uh, like if someone, some parameter is increasing, then what will happen to another parameter? Because for that, then you have to know more laws. We, do, we still don't know the second law. So it may lead to wrong conclusion. I mean, uh, you may not get convinced with, uh, or you may, may not get an answer scientifically. So wherever scientific answer is possible right now, I'm giving you, uh, where it's not so clear for that, we have to wait for the second law, when all these parameters will be introduced properly. Okay. So I think it should be a constant specific volume line. That's all. I agree. But my only purpose was uh, to show you these isobars. I, I, I didn't look at all this broken line when I was taking it from Google. So I have to check. Anyway, I will check. That's not an issue. It will take a minute, but not now. So this is called Molyer diagram. Okay. This is very famous among engineers. Okay. What this Molyer diagram is. So this I will here give you some, uh, you know, I'll try to give you some mathematical description of this. Anyway, this is called HS diagram. Uh -huh. This is highlight that. This is pen. So this is HS diagram. And this was created by this scientist Molière, so that's why it is also known as Molière diagram, enthalpy entropy diagram. This, uh, uh, you know, this 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 black bold solid line, which I now I am making it in different color. So this is our phase boundary. Okay. The Dashed lines, I don't know whether I should say broken line or dashed line. Let me mark it with different colors, otherwise it will be confusing. It's orange lines, let's say. These are constant pressure lines, okay, as it is written here. And I'm coming to that, how this graph looks like this. Then what else we have? We have, and this is the critical point. What else we have? We have, let me choose another color, maybe blue. We have constant temperature line also. Why these are on top of each other that we'll discuss. That uh, in, this, in this regime, they are on top of each other that we'll discuss. Okay. Remember, this is HS diagram. Hmm? 
So I don't think that these lines which I am showing is either pressure or temperature. The pressure and temperature value can be different, but these curves can collapse. The, these curves can be top of each other. Okay. So that we will we'll see. Huh? Right. First, let me draw and then let, gradually you will, you will understand this diagram. Although this is not the right time to discuss this diagram, but I thought I don't know whether we would be able to revisit this or not. And remember, without understanding this diagram, also you can use it freely. But I think uh, we should discuss how we create this diagram. And then again, uh, I think after second law, at least this diagram we can discuss again. Okay. So we have constant uh, temperature line. So these are constant temperature line. Okay. And we have constant pressure line. And these lines. These lines are constant quality line. Quality means quality of stream, steam. What does it mean by quality? X. So these are constant X line. And how we define X? Mass of gas fridge by mg plus mass of fluid. Okay, that's how we define X. So these are constant quality lines. Okay, so X is constant. Of course, if you are towards vapor regime, your quality is high, let's say, and as you gradually go towards left, left, your quality of steam decreases. You have more saturated liquid. Okay. So, in order to understand this, uh, let's few, uh, let's learn few concepts. So, let me open now a new page. Okay. Now, what we know from first law is as follows. Assume that there is no other form of energy except internal energy. So in place of E, I can write this U. Okay. And if it is not dou, this is du. Du plus that's what first plus H. So I said that E contains only U, that's why I can safely write U. Okay. And what is uh, do, uh, and if we take a simple Compressible substance. What does it mean by simple compressible substance? Means means the only mode of quasi only mode of quasi static work is Compression expansion in quasi static way. Quasi static work, compression expansion of a fluid. So that is called simple compressible substance. So for the uh, such substance, what is work done? Anyone? Anyone? What is work done? It is also called PV work. So what is uh, work done? Yes, anyone? What is work done? It's a pressure volume work. What we should write? PDV. PDV, yeah, that's right. Integral PDV. PDV. Yeah, simple. Okay, PDV, perfect. Now, if we do it at constant pressure, so now I'm putting a subscript. Now I'm doing the process at constant pressure. So, do Q. P. Since it's a, at constant pressure, I can write du plus p dv plus I can add vdp. Doesn't matter why? Because dp is zero, so adding zero doesn't uh, uh, create any problem. Okay. So at constant pressure, and you have done this derivation, I guess, uh, before also. So du plus d of pv. This is only possible when we are doing it uh, process at a constant pressure. So, do Q at constant P is D of, uh, these are all specific variables, huh? small u, small v, huh? small u, small p, v. So, what we see that, what is the beauty here? You try to see 
that uh, we know that heat is a path function we know it but when you are providing heat at constant pressure in a reversible way remember when you are providing heat at constant pressure in a reversible way and the only quasi static work mode is this compression or expansion or pv work then it leads to i state variable because on the right hand side we have a exact differential small d and what we call this and it means that it's a thermodynamic property and what this thermodynamic property is anyone d of what i think you can guess it anyone enthalpy enthalpy very very so we know that if you supply heat to a simple compressor so i'm not writing everything but uh, you can uh, again we will in the lecture and you can note uh, make i mean you can make your own lecture notes when you are supplying the heat at constant pressure to a simple compressible substance and if the only work is this pv work in quasi static mode then in that case heat given to the system is equal to the change in a thermodynamic property which we know as enthalpy okay so it means and that's where it comes that it's a indirectly measurable thermodynamic property because you have to measure heat given at constant pressure with other uh, conditions which i mentioned okay so it's a indirectly measurable thermodynamic property so you have to measure this heat and that will give you enthalpy so if you do this experiment and if you add heat slowly and you do the process reversibly you will come to know your h in fact you will come to know your change in h and then you have to take a reference point and then we can define absolute h remember for all these uh, thermodynamic property either it's entropy or enthalpy you have to define a reference point okay so if you define the reference point then h is completely defined you have to just measure the heat given to the system and you will come to know what is your h so that's what we learn okay that is point number 1 okay i guess i can save these pages also i am no i don't know i think there's is a option so that later ah yes it's here save mm, save i think desktop and cosal okay page 1 let's say If there will be something important, then we'll save it from on to the page one. Save. Ah, fine. Okay. Another. So this that's what we learned that if uh, we can measure H, right? new page. Then second law says that if you are supplying heat reversible, and of course at constant pressure, we in the previous process we provided heat reversible. so let's put this p with us that is also defined as or in fact you can say that change in entropy is defined as this okay so we define two things so all these are in reversible mode so that we'll see how we transfer it reversibly so we have h definition of h we have definition of s in terms of heat so if someone ask how you measure entropy or change in entropy we simply say uh, if entropy then one has to define the reference point okay one initial point entropy should be known known means you have to say that at this point entropy is zero and there is enough logic to say there should be enough logic to say that thing that is not uh, the agenda in this subject so if you know heat change and if you know temperature you can calculate both the h and s and once you have knowledge of both h and s you can create this molecular diagram that is point number 1 okay so now we are into that how we can create this diagram now we have some idea that yes h and s diagram can be created if we can measure the heat change and the temperature okay fine <laughs> now what else if you will see so if you uh, replace this do q uh, uh, p with dh then what we will get uh, this dh by t is ds so dh by ds is t do you think anything wrong here 
the wrong not wrong but something missing remember we have done this process at constant pressure so it's a partial derivative if you have to write this way do h by do s at constant p because this this relation is only valid if you are doing process at constant pressure so what we know from here that do h by do s means the slope of this diagram should give us temperature okay which which uh, which line uh, slope of which line should give us temperature can anyone comment do you have so the lines line? of constant pressure very good lines of constant pressure because then only we have a, you see we have a condition here that del h by do, do h by do s at constant p will give you temperature so if you draw a tangent at constant pressure line in this hs diagram you will get the temperature at that point so it means if you want to create the constant temperature line then you have to identify all those points at different pressure line where do h by do where slope is same and when you uh, join those points you will get constant temperature line again i am repeating first think about constant pressure lines okay so constant pressure line uh, one can easily create and slope of at any point if you take the slope of uh, the curve at that constant pressure line in hs diagram that will give you temperature at that point that is point number 1 point number 2 i am saying that if someone is interested in creating a constant temperature line then on all the hs diagram at constant pressure line and we'll see it soon one has to identify those points where the slopes are equal and then if you join those points where the slopes are equal then that will be a constant temperature line because if slopes are equal then this uh, do h by do s is nothing but giving us temperature so there those are uh, if slopes are equal the temperature at those points are equal if you join them you will get constant temperature line so does it make sense bhavna yes sir okay we will see the more, more detailed diagram then it will be more clear what else i can tell you before taking a break let me see so this is a rough description anything else i should uh, so this is fine okay now let me ask you this way so let's say that uh, okay how we know that uh, nth uh, this uh, nth hs diagram or hs curve any curve should be a increasing curve can anyone comment this hs curve should be a increasing curve for constant pressure line how so my question is this and then we'll take a break hs curves monotonically increasing the temperature is always positive very good that one increasing at a four constant pressure line four constant p so we got an answer already that do h by do s is t and t is always positive okay in kelvin of course so uh, in that sense we can say that um what we say yeah that uh, we will get always increasing graph hmm? fine so that's why these all hs curve are increasing now let's uh, one more important point consider the fetch uh, this uh, here uh, this this line let's say this line so this the, the, we are in this fetch change regime huh? do you think it's a straight line and why uh, i if not then any comment so during phase change will pressure and temperature change no sir no right it means that during phase change do h by do s slope should be constant throughout and that's why these lines are straight line okay 
and then after that of course it's a curved line but within this it's a straight line because when there is a phase change then of course uh, you yeah, uh, since you are uh, creating isobars pressure is not changing temperature is also not changing and we know that in hs diagram temperature is nothing but the slope of the hs curve so slope has to be constant throughout within this regime in this liquid vapor regime and it is only possible if you take a straight line let's take a break of uh, Five minutes. It's ten two. We can meet at ten seven. Okay. Chalo, break lo. Then we'll meet. So I'll stop sharing so that you will be free. Otherwise, you will be occupied. Huh? Let me stop sharing and then. Oh, where is that? button of stop sharing i i when you say i should hide it i i, I already it's now it's not appearing anyone can tell where that hide button is so one with x on it where where come again uh so the one next to the three dots one person any anyone one anyone